You are all welcome in this video. Today we will understand Polygons Classification of Polygon Diagonals of Polygon Till now we have learnt about Points, Lines, Planes and Angles In this video we will learn about Polygons, another important element of geometry. As we can see that the word polygon is made up of two words, poly and gon, where poly means multiple and gon means side or angles. Therefore, the figures which have many sides are called polygons. We have to keep in mind that any polygon is made up of three parts and these three parts are side, vertex, angle. The sides are the line segments that form polygons. The vertex is the point where two sides intersect and the space between two intersecting arms is called an angle. There are six sides, six vertices and six angles in this polygon. The last but most important fact for polygons is that polygons are two-dimensional 2D shapes that is all the vertices of polygons are in the same plane. Polygons are not three-dimensional or 3D shapes, but 3D shapes can be made using them, like a box. A box is not a polygon, but all the faces of this box are polygons. So now we have a meaningful definition of polygon, which says, a polygon is a simple closed curve made up of only line segments. These are all polygons. Now, can you tell that a polygon can be made from a line segment? Perfect! It cannot be made because we have just learned that a figure with multiple sides is called a polygon. Can polygons be obtained from two line segments? No, because by joining two line segments, we get two sides, one vertex and one angle. But this shape is not closed due to which it is not a polygon. So can a polygon be made from three line segments? Yes, joining three line segments gives us a simple closed curve or shape which has three sides, three vertices and three angles which fulfills all the conditions for a shape to be a polygon. In this way, we can make a polygon by joining three or more than three line segments. Like this polygon, if we pay attention to the rest of the polygons, we find that the number of sides, vertices and angles in each polygon are equal. On the basis of sides or vertices, we classify polygons. A shape with three sides or vertices is called a triangle. A shape with four sides or vertices is called a quadrilateral. A shape with five sides or vertices is called a pentagon. A shape with six sides or vertices is called a hexagon. 
a shape with seven sides or vertices is called a heptagon. A shape with eight sides or vertices is called an octagon. A shape with nine sides or vertices is called a nonagon. A shape with ten sides or vertices is called a decagon. Now if we take this polygon and name it in this way, can you name the adjacent vertices of vertex A? Well done! The vertex B and vertex F are adjacent to the vertex A. Now connect the vertex A with the vertices which are not adjacent to it. By doing this, with all the vertices of this hexagon, we get some line segments. We call these line segments as diagonal. Therefore, we can say that the diagonal of a polygon is formed by connecting any two vertices except adjacent vertices. Today in this video, we have learnt In the next video, we will learn some examples based on these. You are all welcome in this video. Today we will see examples based on polygons and its diagonal. You have learned about polygons well. Now is the time to play a game. The rules of this game are very simple. You will be shown a shape here and you have to tell whether is it a polygon or not. Are you ready? Very good. Our first shape is a square. Is the square a polygon? Yes, the square has four sides and four vertices and is a simple closed curve. So, it is a polygon. Now we have, I don't even know what to say. But, is it a polygon? No. Because it is an open curve, it cannot be a polygon. What do you think about this? Perfect! This is a polygon. Can you name it? Because it has seven arms, it is a heptagon. Is the circle a polygon? The circle is a simple closed curve. Which does it have? Side, vertex or angles. So, it is not a polygon. Hmm. This looks something interesting. It is a simple closed curve which also has sides and vertices. But it also has a curved part. Can it be a polygon with this curved part? We know that a polygon is a simple closed curve formed by joining line segments. So, this shape is not a polygon. Very nice. You all played this game very well. Let us now see another question. How many diagonals can a heptagon have? Let 
let us first name this heptagon. We know that the line segments connecting any two vertices of a polygon except adjacent vertices are called diagonal. So let's start with the vertex A. Now let's draw a diagonal from the vertex B. Similarly, draw diagonals from vertices C, D and E. When we try to draw diagonals from the vertices F and G, we find that all the diagonals formed from these vertices are already formed. Now, here you can see that from vertex A, 4. From vertex B, 4. From vertex C, 3. From vertex D, 2. From vertex E, one diagonal is formed. So, a heptagon can have a total of 14 diagonals. Today we understood about polygons and diagonals of polygons with the help of some examples. Welcome all of you to this video. By now, we have learned to find the sum of the interior angles of a N-shaped polygon. In this video, we will learn about the sum of measurements of external angles of a polygon. Do you recognize them? Yes, these are all polygons. A polygon with N sides also has N internal angles and N external angles. Now what do you understand by the external angles of a polygon? Let us understand this with the help of a hexagon. Move AB outward. The angle that will form between AB and BC outside the polygon is called the exterior angle of B. All external angles of the hexagon are shown in this figure. Suppose you are in a hexagonal garden. You start from vertex A and move once in the anti-clockwise direction along the boundary of the garden. You start with A and move in the direction of AB. As soon as you reach B, you rotate at angle 1 and move towards BC. Let us represent this angle 1 on the right. As soon as you reach C, you move in the direction of CD by rotating angle 2. Angles also represent 2 on the right. Continue this process until you return to the vertex A and keep on displaying the angle formed each time to the right. In this way, you can complete one of the rounds by walking outside the garden. When you do this, you see that when connecting the angles formed to complete a round of the garden, they represent a circle. And we know that the total measure of the angles formed at the center of the circle is 360 degrees. Using this, we can say that the sum of the measurements of the external angles of the hexagon is 360 degrees. Let us now discuss the external angles of these figures. If we place these figures on a piece of cardboard by cutting their external angles in this way, 
we can see that they also represent a circle like a hexagon. On the basis of which, we can say that the sum of the external angles of these two figures is also 360 degrees. Consequently, we can say that the sum of all the exterior angles of a polygon is always 360 degrees. Today in this video, we learnt some of measurements of external angles of a polygon. In the next video, we will see some examples based on these. Welcome you all to this video. Today, we will see examples based on different types of polygons. Example 1. Separate the following polygons into concave and convex polygons. Pause the video to try yourself, then match the answer. Is the polygon A convex or concave? Perfect! It is a concave polygon because when we draw the diagonal of the polygon, we see that the two diagonals are located in the exterior of the polygon. The polygon B is convex because all the diagonals of this polygon are located in its interior. Similarly, polygon C is a concave and polygon D convex polygon. Example 2. Separate the following into regular polygons and irregular polygons. We can see that the measurement of the sides in the polygon A are not the same. We know that a polygon whose measurement of any side or angle is not the same as the measurement of other sides or angles is an irregular polygon. Similarly, we can put polygon B in the category of irregular polygons. In polygon C, the marks on all the sides indicate that the measurement of all the sides are equal and the marks on all the angles show that all the angles are also equal to each other. Hence, it is a regular polygon. Today we saw examples based on different types of polygons. In the next video, we will discuss misconceptions based on these. Welcome all of you to this video. In this video today, we will understand the misconceptions related to different types of polygons. Example 1. Mark the regular polygons in the following. Polygon A is a square and all the sides of the square are equal and all the angles are equal, so it is a regular polygon. A polygon B is a rectangle in which all the angles are equal to the right angle, but the sides are not equal, therefore it is an irregular polygon. Often some students understand that the polygon becomes a regular polygon even if it's all the angles are equal. Both polygon C and polygon D are rhombus. Sometimes they make this mistake because of the equal sides of the rhombus. They forget that all the angles of a rhombus are not equal, which is necessary for a polygon to be regular.
Hopefully, now you will have a better understanding of polygons and their different types. Welcome all of you to this video. Today in this video, we will understand the angle sum property of a quadrilateral. Here are some figures that you must recognize. These are all quadrilaterals. Now the question is, what is the meaning of quadrilateral and what is it? Figures that have four the side. are called quadrilaterals. Like here, all these shapes have four the side. Now can you tell how many angles are there in a quadrilateral? Yes, a quadrilateral has four angles. All the angles are shown in the figure. Look at this quadrilateral. We have named all the vertices and angles. Can you tell the sum of all interior angles of this quadrilateral? Let us take the help of an activity for this. With a piece of cardboard, we make a similar quadrilateral and cut its angles in this way. Put the vertices of all these angles at one point. Then we can see that they form a circle. We know that the angle formed at the center of the circle is 360 degrees. Therefore, based on this activity, we can say that the sum of interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. Let's look at verification in its mathematical form. We draw a diagonal which divides the quadrilateral into two triangles. For example, we have joined AC. This quadrilateral is now divided into two triangles, ADC and Triangle ABC As you can see that angle A is divided into angle 1 and angle 2. Angle C is divided into angle 3 and angle 4. Let us write the angles as follows. With the help of triangle sum property, we can say that the sum of the angles of each triangle Triangle ADC and Triangle ABC will be 180 degrees. Because we have divided the quadrilateral into two triangles, therefore, we can say that the sum of the four angles of the quadrilateral will be equal to the sum of the angles of the two triangles. So, we add equations 3 and 4 from which we get the sum of all angles at 360 degrees. With the help of equations 1 and 2, we can write equation 5 as follows. In this way, we get 360 degrees of sum of all four angles of the quadrilateral. We also call it the angle sum property of a quadrilateral. This property is true for both convex and concave quadrilateral. Therefore, we can say that the sum of the four interior angles of any quadrilateral will always be 360 degrees. Today in this video, we learned about the angle sum property of quadrilateral. In the next video, we will see some examples based on these.
welcome all of you to this video. In the previous video, we understood the angle sum property of the quadrilateral. Today, we will see an example based on this. In the polygons shown, the ratio in the angles B, C and D is 2 ratio 3 ratio 4 respectively. Find the measure of the smallest angle of the polygon. We can see that this figure has 4 sides AB, BC, CD and DA. So, it is a quadrilateral. In the given figure ABCD, the angle A is 90 degrees. In the polygons shown, the ratio in the angles B, C and D is 2 ratio 3 ratio 4 respectively. Suppose X is the greatest common factor in the measurement of angles B, C, D. So we can say that angle B will be equal to 2x, angle C, 3x and angle D, 4x. As we know that the sum of the four angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees, which we can represent as a linear equation of this four. Substituting all the values into it and further solving, gives us a measure of x by 30 degrees. Using which, we can find measurements of all unknown angles in this way. As you can see, angle B is the smallest angle of the polygon, which is 60 degrees. Let us see another example. If the four angles of a quadrilateral are 3x plus 2 degrees, x minus 3, 2x plus 1 degree, 4x plus 10 degree respectively, can you find the measure of x? We know that the sum of the four interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. So, 3x plus 2 plus x minus 3 plus 2x plus 1 plus 4x plus 10 is equal to 360 degrees, which we can write in this way. Solving the equation further gives us a measure of x 35 degrees. Can you tell the sum of all the angles of a pentagon? Try it yourself. We will see the solution in the next video. Today in this video, we saw examples based on angle sum property of quadrilateral. Welcome all of you to this video. In the previous video, we saw examples based on the angle sum property of a quadrilateral. Today in this video, we will learn to find the sum of the angles of polygons. Can you tell the sum of the angles of the shown figures? The first shape is a triangle. The sum of all its angles is 180 degrees. The second figure is a quadrilateral and in the previous video, we have learnt that the sum of the four angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. Can you now tell the sum of the interior angles of these figures? Let's try with the help of an activity. Let's start with this pentagon. 
you may remember that we have found the sum of all the angles of the quadrilateral by dividing the quadrilateral into two triangles. In the same way, we can also divide the pentagon into triangles. If we draw a diagonal from any vertex of the pentagon, say M, then this pentagon is divided into three triangles. And we know that the sum of all the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. If we add the sum of the angles of the three triangles, then we get the sum of the interior angles of the pentagon, which is 540 degrees. Therefore, we can say that the sum of all the angles of a five-sided polygon is 540 degrees. In the same way, we can divide the hexagon, heptagon and octagon into triangles and find the sum of their angles. You can see that by making the diagonal, we have four triangles in the hexagon, five in the heptagon, six triangles are found in an octagon. When we multiply the number of triangles and polygons and the sum of the interior angles of a triangle, the sum of all the interior angles of that polygon is found. On this basis, we can say that the sum of all the interior angles of a polygon is equal to the number of triangles formed by making a diagonal from one vertex of that polygon and the product of 180 degrees. Let us fill this table. Looking at this table, we see that the number of triangles formed in each polygon is 2 less than the number of sides of the polygon. With the help of this table, we get this formula for the sum of all interior angles with n sides, where n is the number of sides in a polygon. Today in this video, we learned to find the sum of interior angles of a n-sided polygon. Welcome all of you to this video. By now, we have learned to find the sum of the interior angles of a N-shaped polygon. In this video, we will learn about the sum of measurements of external angles of a polygon. Do you recognize them? Yes, these are all polygons. A polygon with n sides also has n internal angles and n external angles. Now what do you understand by the external angles of a polygon? Let us understand this with the help of a hexagon. Move AB outward. The angle that will form between AB and BC outside the polygon is called the exterior angle of B. All external angles of the hexagon are shown in this figure. Suppose you are in a hexagonal garden. You start from vertex A and move once in the anti-clockwise direction along the boundary of the garden. You start with A and move in the direction of AB. As soon as you reach B, you rotate at angle 1 and move towards BC. Let us represent this angle 1 on the right. As soon as you reach C, you move in the direction of CD by rotating angle 2. Angles also represent 
2 on the right. Continue this process until you return to the vertex A and keep on displaying the angle formed each time to the right. In this way, you can complete one of the rounds by walking outside the garden. When you do this, you see that when connecting the angles formed to complete a round of the garden, they represent a circle. And we know that the total measure of the angles formed at the center of the circle is 360 degrees. Using this, we can say that the sum of the measurements of the external angles of the hexagon is 360 degrees. Let us now discuss the external angles of these figures. If we place these figures on a piece of cardboard by cutting their external angles in this way, we can see that they also represent a circle like a hexagon. On the basis of which, we can say that the sum of the external angles of these two figures is also 360 degrees. Consequently, we can say that the sum of all the exterior angles of a polygon is always 360 degrees. Today in this video, we learnt sum of measurements of external angles of a polygon. In the next video, we will see some examples based on these. Welcome all of you to this video. In the previous video, we learnt and understood about the external angle sum property of a polygon. Today in this video, we will see an example based on this. Find the value of x in the heptagon shown. It is said in the question that the given figure is a heptagon. And we know from the previous video that the sum of all the exterior angles of a polygon is 360 degrees. But here, we can see that the measurement of only six external angles of the septagon. Let us name this seventh external angle measure as M. And let's write this equation. In the picture, we can see that the measure of this angle is 90 degrees. We know that the sum of all the angles formed at a point in a line segment is 180 degrees with the help of which we find the value of M which is 90 degrees. Substituting M into this equation and on solving the value of X comes 10 degree. Let us go ahead and consider an interesting fact related to the angles of quadrilaterals. Here we are shown some polygon whose measurements are for each interior angle and exterior angle. We can see that as the number of arms in the polygon increases, the measurement of each internal angle increases but the measurement of each external angle decreases. We can confirm this by the formula related to the inner angles of polygons and the formula related to the external angles of polygons. You try to find the measure of each inner and outer angle of the other polygon. 
Today in this video, we saw an example and an interesting fact based on the external angles of polygons. In the next video, we will see simple mistakes related to it. Welcome all of you to this video. In the previous video, we saw an example based on the external angles of a polygon. Today we will see the common mistakes associated with the external angles of a polygon. What will be the value of x in the figure given below? The figure has 8 sides, so it is an octagon. Here, the external angles of the octagon are shown. Some children see that it is an octagon and with the help of this formula, find the sum of the interior angles of the octagon, which is 1080 degrees. And then form the concept that the sum of all unknown angles will be equal to 1080 degrees. On the basis of which, we complete the calculation. The value of x is found to be 54 degrees, which is the wrong answer. In the previous video, we read that the sum of the exterior angles of a polygon is always 360 degrees. Therefore, the sum of all the external angles given in the figure will be 360 degrees, which on further solving, we get the value of x as 18 degrees, which is the correct answer. Today, we saw a simple mistake involving the external angles of a polygon. Hopefully, you all have a good understanding of the external angles of a polygon. Welcome all of you to this video. Today in this video, we will understand trapezium, isosceles trapezium and properties of trapezium and isosceles trapezium. So far in geometry, we have come to know about polygons and type of polygons. Quadrilateral and angle sum property of a quadrilateral. Can you identify these figures? Well done! All these figures are quadrilaterals in which this yellow figure is a rectangle and the red figure is a square but we do not know about this pink figure. So let's come together today to know about this shape. If you notice, you will find that a pair of sides in this figure are parallel. Arrow marks indicate parallel lines. Let's see how we call them parallel. If we draw the perpendicular from the vertices of the shorter parallel side, then we will see that these perpendiculars are of equal length, that is, they have the same length, which is why this shape is called trapezium. In this figure, one pair of sides is parallel and the other pair is non-parallel. Can you now identify trapezium from these shapes? If we look at the blue figure, it is a quadrilateral in which a pair of sides is parallel. 
Hence, this figure is a trapezium. Let us now discuss this brown figure. In this, we see that no pair of sides is parallel. So, it will not be trapezium. In this green figure, we are given a pair of sides parallel. But if you notice that it is not just a quadrilateral, While we know from the definition of trapezium, a trapezium is a quadrilateral in which a pair of sides is parallel. Hence, this shape is not trapezium. This orange shape is a trapezium because we can see that a pair of sides in this quadrilateral is parallel. Hopefully, you will now be able to identify trapezium. Let us now discuss properties of trapezium. As we know from the definition of trapezium, a pair of sides in trapezium will always be parallel, which is its first property. We know from the previous video that the sum of the measurements of the four interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees and since the trapezium is also a quadrilateral then the sum of the measurements of the four interior angles of a trapezium will also be 360 degrees. Similarly, the sum of the measurements of the four exterior angles of the trapezium will always be 360 degrees. An important properties of trapezium is that the sum of adjacent angles on any side in a pair of non-parallel sides of a trapezium is 180 degrees. Let us now know about a special kind of a trapezium. If the non-parallel sides of a trapezium are of equal length, then such trapezium is called isosceles trapezium. A major feature of isosceles trapezium is that the adjacent angles formed on a side in pairs of parallel sides are always congruent. Therefore, in this trapezium, we can say that angle 1 will be equal to angle 2 and angle 3 will be equal to angle 4. Today in this video, we have learnt Meaning of trapezium Identifying trapezoid shapes Properties of trapezium Definition and Properties of isosceles trapezium In the next video, we will see some examples based on these. You are welcome in this video. Today we will see some examples based on trapezium, isosceles trapezium and their properties. Now you are well acquainted with the definition of trapezium and isosceles trapezium. Then let us play a game. Where do you see trapezium in this house? Pause the video and try. Well done, you recognized absolutely right. In this house, we can see trapezium in table, table lamp, lock and pot. Let us now look at some examples based on properties of a trapezium. Can you find the value of x in this trapezium? In the previous video, we learned that the sum of adjacent angles on a side in a pair of non-parallel sides of a trapezium is 180 degrees. 
can this property of trapezium help you find the value of x? Yes, this property of trapezium can help us find the value of x. Let's see how. We can say with the help of this property that the sum of angle S and angle R will be 180 degrees. From the question we know the value of angle S which is 60 degrees. Thus, we can say that the sum of X and 60 degree will be 180 degrees. On solving this, we get the value of X as 180 degrees minus 60 degrees, 120 degrees. Let us see another example. Can you find the value of angle A in this trapezium? Pause the video and try. Let us find the value of angle A. By trapezium properties, we know that the sum of two adjacent angles formed on each non-parallel side of any trapezium is 180 degrees. We can see from the question that the given trapezium is an isosceles trapezium. Now because we have been given the value of angle C, 115 degrees in the question, value of angle B e will be 180 degrees minus 115 degrees that is 65 degrees and we learned in the previous video that in an isosceles trapezium the adjacent angles formed on a side in a pair of parallel sides are always congruent hence value of angle A and angle B e will be equal from this, we can say that the value of angle A will also be 65 degrees. Today, with the help of some examples, we understood about trapezium, isosceles trapezium and their properties. Welcome all of you to this video. Till now, we have come to know about polygons and their types, angle sum property of quadrilateral, trapezium. Today in this video, we will understand kite and characteristics of kites. Can you tell what is this? Very good. This is a kite. All of you must have flown kites and had a lot of fun. Do you know, kite is an important part of geometry like square, rectangle, trapezium, parallelogram. Kite is also a special type of quadrilateral. Kites are easier to understand than mere sightings but a little difficult to define in precise mathematical terms. Because it is also a quadrilateral, it has four vertices, four sides, four angles, as well as two diagonals. Let's name these heads with M, N, O and P. If you look at it, you will see that this pair of arms M, N and M, P is smaller than both other sides O, N and O, P. This kite has two diagonals M, O and N, P. The two diagonals intersect each other at a point X. Let us discuss these. If you bend this quadrilateral kite with respect to its diagonal N, P, you can see that the triangle MNP is smaller than the triangle NOP, that is, both triangles are not congruent. That is, the corresponding parts of these triangles will not be of equal measure 
If you put the top O at the top M, you can see that the measures of these two angles are not the same. Now if we talk about diagonal MO, then you will see that here MO divides this kite into two triangles, MNO and MPO. We can see that the triangle MNO completely covers the triangle MPO when the kite is folded relative to this diagonal MO. Consequently, we can say that the two triangles are mutually congruent. That is, the corresponding parts of both triangles will be of equal measure. That is, the corresponding sides MN and MP and the sides ON and OP are equal and the corresponding angles MNO and MPO are also of equal measure. So we can say that a kite has two pairs of different adjacent arms. The two sides of each pair are mutually equal. The angles formed between the two unequal arms are of equal measure. And the angles formed between the two equal arms are not of equal measure. Let us discuss one more important fact. You can see that both the diagonals of kite are not of equal measure. Now, if we look at the triangles MNP and OPN, we can see that both these triangles are isosceles triangles. Because each triangle has two sides of equal measure. And MX and OX are the median from the vertices M and O of the triangles MNP and OPN respectively. With the help of which we can say that the measurements of NX and PX are equal. This leads to the conclusion that the larger diagonal MO of the kite bisects the smaller diagonal NP. We know that in an isosceles triangle, the median drawn between the two equal sides on its opposite side from the vertex is perpendicular to it. That is, in the isosceles triangle MNP, line segment MX bisects the arm NP. Similarly, the line segment OX bisects the arm NP. The MX plus OX is equal to MO, so this leads to the conclusion that the larger diagonal of the kite bisects the smaller diagonal. We know that in an isosceles triangle, the median drawn on its opposite side from the vertex between two equal sides bisects angle at that the vertex. That is, the diagonal MO bisects the angles M and O. Therefore, we can say that the diagonal formed from the vertices of unequal angles of the kite bisects these angles. Today in this video, we learnt kite and characteristics of kites. In the next video, we will learn some examples based on these. Welcome all of you to this video. Today we will see examples based on kite. Let us now see a question. If ABCD is a kite, can you find the value of angle A? As we know, the diagonals in a kite are perpendicular to each other. Can we calculate X with its help? Let us discuss this. 
we know from the triangle angle sum property that the sum of all the angles of the triangle is 180 degrees. So that we can write this equation for triangle AOD. Substituting all the values into this equation gives us linear equation in a variable. On solving this, we get the value of x as 20 degrees. Now the question is, how can we calculate the value of angle A using angle X? In the previous video, we learned that the diagonal formed from the vertices of unequal angles of a kite bisects these angles. That is, the angle A will be equal to 2X. We have found the value of x to be 20 degrees, which we can replace in this equation and find the value of angle A, which will be 40 degrees. Today we understood the characteristics of kites. Welcome all of you to this video. Till now, in geometry, we have learnt about polygons and their types, angle sum properties of quadrilateral, trapezium and kite. Today we will learn about another important element in geometry, the parallelogram and its properties. Here are some examples that you might be familiar with. You can see that a parallelogram exists in all these objects. So, can you guess how many sides and angles are there in a parallelogram? Well done! Because a parallelogram is a type of quadrilateral, the parallelogram has four sides and four angles. So let's understand the parallelogram with the help of a game. Two friends, Raju and Ramesh, are having a discussion. Raju drew parallel lines P and Q on a page like this. Ramesh drew a line I that cuts two parallel lines. Raju drew a line M parallel to I in a way that gives them a polygon with four sides. Naming the vertices A, B, C and D. Raju says the figure A, B, C, D is a quadrilateral. So can you tell Raju what is the special name of quadrilateral A, B, C, D? This shape is made up of two pairs of parallel lines. A quadrilateral in which both pairs of the opposite sides are parallel is called a parallelogram. So let us now understand the characteristics of a parallelogram. Join the vertex A to vertex C and vertex B to vertex D. We find two diagonals AC and BD of the same quadrilateral intersecting at the point O. Now cut the shape ABCD with scissors. Because this quadrilateral is composed of a pair of two parallel lines, the opposite sides of this quadrilateral will be parallel. Now, if we cut this quadrilateral with respect to the diagonal AC in this way, we get two triangles ABC and ADC. By placing one triangle on top of the other, you can see that the triangle ABC completely covers the triangle ADC. Consequently, 
we can say that the two triangles are mutually congruent with the help of which we get to know that the sides AB and CD and BC and DA will be of equal measure. Also, angle B and angle D will also be of equal measure. And if we cut this quadrilateral with respect to the diagonal BD, we get two triangles ABD and BCD. By placing one triangle on top of another, you can see that triangle ABD completely covers triangle BCD. Hence, we can say that the two triangles are mutually congruent. With the help of which, we again get to know that the sides AB and CD and DA and BC are of equal measure. Also, we find that angle A and angle C are of equal measure. Therefore, we can say that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel and equal and the opposite angles are of equal measure. Now, can you tell the sum of all the four interior angles of this parallelogram? Perfect! With the help of the quadrilateral angle sum property, we can tell that the sum of all the angles of a parallelogram will be 360 degrees. We have just seen that both pairs of the opposite angles in a parallelogram are of equal measure. Using it, we can write this equation in another way also. Similarly, we can find the sum of angles B and C, angles C and D and angles D and A. This is 180 degrees. This leads to the conclusion that the adjacent angles of the parallelogram are supplementary. Now the question is whether diagonal AC and BD have equal measurements. Find the length of diagonal AC and BD using a scale. You will find that measurement of diagonal AC and BD is not equal. If we fold this parallelogram in such a way that the vertex A completely covers vertex C, now if we fold this quadrilateral in such a way that the vertex B comes over the vertex D, by doing this, we get the midpoint of the diagonal BD. This is point O. This is also the midpoint of the diagonal AC. Since the midpoint of the two diagonals is the same, we can say that both diagonals of the parallelogram bisect each other. You can verify this by measuring the diagonals with the help of a scale. Today, in this video, we understood about the parallelogram and its properties. In the next video, we will see some examples based on these. Welcome all of you to this video. In the previous video, we learned about the parallelogram and its properties. Today, we will see examples based on these. Since now we know about the parallelogram well, Now is the time to play a game. The rules of this game are very simple. You will be shown a shape here. 
and you have to tell whether it is a parallelogram or not. Are you ready? Very good. Let's look at the figure. Is ABCD a parallelogram? We know that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal and parallel to each other. And as you can see here, AB and DC are parallel lines, but AD and BC are not parallel lines. Nor they are opposite sides of this quadrilateral equal. So, ABCD is not a parallelogram. This is a trapezium. Very nice. You all played this game very well. Let us now see a question. If ABCD is a parallelogram, can you find the value of angle A? We know that the adjacent angles of a parallelogram are supplementary. Angle A and angle D are supplementary. Angle so their sum will be 180 degrees. Substituting the value of angle A, that is. 2x plus 10 and the value of angle D that is 3x in this equation we get the value of x as 34 degrees now the question is how can we find the value of angle A using x you can see in the figure that the value of angle A is equal to 2x plus 10 degrees thus by substituting the value of x here we get the value of angle A as 78 degrees. Let us now see another question. The figure ABCD is a parallelogram. If the value of AC is 32 cm and BO is 2 cm more than AO, can you tell the value of diagonal BD? As we know that in parallelogram, both the diagonals bisect each other. So, the value of AO and OC will be equal or we can say that AO will be half of AC. In the question, the value of AC is given 32 cm which gives us the value of AO 16 cm. According to the question, the length of BO is 2 cm more than AO, which we can write something like this. Hmm, can you now find the value of diagonal BD using BO? Well done! The value of BD will be double of BO because both diagonals bisect each other in a parallelogram. In this way, we get the value of BD as 36 cm. Today we saw some examples based on parallelograms and its properties. In the next video, we will see some simple mistakes related to it. Welcome all of you to this video. In the previous video, we saw examples based on parallelograms. Today, we will see some simple mistakes related to it. Ramesh, Suresh and Kamlesh see that if they will answer one of the questions currently in the newspaper, will get a reward. Ramesh, Suresh and Kamlesh select options 1, 2 and 3 respectively. Can you tell whose answer is right and why?
As you can see, the angle C is equal to 8x degrees in the figure. How to get the value of angle A using it? Well done! The value of angle A will also be 8x because the opposite angles of a parallelogram are of equal measure. Now the question is, how will the value of x be obtained? Yes, the value of x will be obtained using the side AB because we know that the values of the opposite sides are equal in the parallelogram. The value of AB will be equal to the value of CD. Let us now see how Ramesh, Suresh and Kamlesh have solved this question. Let us see how Ramesh solved it. Ramesh did not change the sign. While solving the equation, he made 20 plus 2 instead of 20 minus 2. Therefore, according to Ramesh, the value of x is found to be 7.33 degree. By substituting the value of x into equation 1, Ramesh gets the value of angle A that is 58 decimal 67 degrees which is the wrong answer. Suresh solved the question in this way. Solving the equation, Suresh gets the value of x as 6 and Suresh takes it as the answer. He forgot that in this question, the value of x is not asked, but the value of angle A is asked. In this way, Suresh gets the value of angle A 6 degrees which is the wrong answer. Kamlesh tried to calculate the angle A in this way. Solving the equation, Kamlesh gets a value of x as 6. The value of angle A is 8x degrees, in which he substitutes the value of x and gets the value of angle A as 48 degrees. This is the correct answer. We can say that Kamlesh has given the correct answer and won the lottery competition. Today, we saw some common mistakes related to a parallelogram. Welcome all of you to this video. In the previous video, we learned about parallelograms and its features. Today in this video, we will study about some special parallelograms. The teacher in the class asked the children to identify this figure. Can you tell what shape it is? Think, think. Well done. Opposite sides are parallel and of equal measure. And the opposite angles are also of equal measure. Hence, the figure shown is a parallelogram. Ramesh, Raju and Meena. Now, you also make a parallelogram. Ramesh, Raju and Meena make these figures. Now, can you tell me how you have drawn your own figure? Ramesh, tell me first. Teacher, I know that in parallelogram, the opposite sides are of parallel and of equal measure. So, I made this parallelogram with the help of these four sides of equal measure, in which the opposite angles are also equal. Very good, Ramesh. All the sides of this parallelogram are of equal measure. Therefore, we can call it a special parallelogram. Do you all know its name? It is a rhombus. Let me tell you an important thing related to the rhombus. If we make a special kind of kite-shaped figure whose four arms are of equal measure, then you can see that we get such shape. 
Now, if we fold the shape respectively with respect to both its diagonals, we find that the triangles formed on folding are mutually congruent, from which we can conclude that the angles in this shape are equal. Also, if we fold this quadrilateral with respect to the lines connecting the middle points of its sides MN and OP and the sides NO and MP respectively, you can see that the sides NO and MP and MN and OP are parallel. This means the opposite sides of this shape are of equal measures and parallel to each other and we have just seen that its opposite angles are of equal measure which makes this shape a rhombus. But we made this shape with the help of a kite. So, what do you think about this rhombus now? Teacher, we can say that the rhombus is a shape that has the characteristics of both the parallelogram and the kite. If we discuss its diagonals, we will find that both of its diagonals are not of equal measure, but they bisect each other. Perfect. So let's now write the characteristics of rhombus with the help of these two figures, which are as follows. Come on, Raju. Now discuss the figure you have made. Tell me, how did you make this shape? I have created this shape keeping in mind all the features of the parallelogram. But in this figure, I have drawn all the right angles. Is it a parallelogram? Yes, Raju, it is a parallelogram, but it becomes a special type of parallelogram because all its angles are right angles and we call this particular parallelogram a rectangle. If we draw the triangles PQR and SRQ appearing in this rectangle separately on another paper and observe, you can see that both triangles are congruent, with the help of which we can say that both diagonals of the rectangle are of equal measure. So, now what can you say about the rectangle? We can say that the rectangle is a parallelogram whose all angles are the right angles and the diagonals are of equal measure and the diagonals bisect each other. Well done, Meena. Let us now see the shape you have made. Tell me, how did you make it? Teacher, I have made a parallelogram whose four sides measure equal and all the angles are right angles. Is this also a special type of parallelogram? Yes, Meena. We call such a parallelogram square. We can also call a square a rectangle that has the same measure of all arms. Since the opposite sides of the square are parallel and all the sides are of equal measure and the opposite angles are also of equal measure, these characteristics of the square correspond to the characteristics of the rhombus. Therefore, we can say that the square is a quadrilateral in which all the features of the parallelogram, rhombus and rectangle are present. So kids, can you tell me about the characteristics of square on this basis? Sir, all the arms in the square are of equal measure. The opposite sides are parallel. All angles are right angles and since it is also a rhombus, its diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Very good Raju. 
Today in this video, we learned about rhombus, rectangles and squares along with their characteristics. In the next video, we will see some examples based on these. Welcome all of you to this video. In the previous video, we learned about rhombus, rectangles, squares and their characteristics. Today we will see examples based on rhombus. If the perimeter of the given rhombus ABCD is 100 cm and the value of diagonal AC is 14 cm, can you tell the value of diagonal BD? Pause the video and try it yourself. Since we have to find the value of diagonal BD, first we draw diagonal BD, which intersects the diagonal AC at point O. In the previous video, we learned that both diagonals of rhombus bisect each other vertically. With the help of which, we find the measure of AO, which is 7 cm. In the question, we are given the perimeter of ABCD as 100 cm. And we know that all the sides of the rhombus are of equal measure using which we find the measure of side AB, which is 25 cm. Now can you tell what we need to do to find the measurement of diagonal BD? We can see that triangle AOB is a right angled triangle, in which we find the measurement of BO using the Pythagoras theorem, which we get 24 cm. With the help of this equation, we can say that the measurement of BD will be 2 times the measurement of BO, that is 48 cm. In this way, we find out the answer to our question. Today in this video, we saw an example based on rhombus. In the next video, we will see a question based on square. Welcome all of you to this video. In the previous video, we saw an example based on rhombus. Today, we will see questions based on square. If ABCD is a square, what will be the area of the shaded region? Pause the video and try it yourself. We are given that it is a square and we know that the sides of the square are of equal measure and all the angles are right angles. So we can say that the sides AB and BC are of equal measure. That gives us a linear equation in one variable, which on further solving we get the value of x as 4. By substituting the value of x in given values of sides AB and BC, we find the correct measurement of the sides, which is 19 cm. And since it is a square, each arm measures 19 cm. 
Now we have to find the area of the shaded part which is triangle BCD whose area we can find with the help of this formula. But which side will be considered as the base and which one height? Since it is a right angle triangle, we can calculate the base altitude as any side forming the right angle and the height as the other and calculate the area of the triangle. In this way, we find the area of shaded part which is 180.5 square centimeters. Today in this video, we saw an example based on squares.